Here is a question that I get asked so regularly that I want to make a video about it and show why and just explain my thinking and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you'll disagree with me. So you'll have to let me know in the comments below what you think. But this is why Horfrost and the Marsh Crawler Slogoth are just bad in Cruel Boys. So when I say bad, what I mean is that there is no justification for taking a 170 point Marsh Crawler. There is no world where it's that he's worth his point cost. That if you put a Marsh Crawler in your list, no matter what your list is, that your list would be better if you had substituted the Marsh Crawler with any other unit. And I don't even mean the same points. I mean that taking one unit of Hobgrots is better than taking a Marsh Crawler Slogoth and you're saving 90 points. A list that is has 90 fewer points in it that includes Hobgrots is better than a list that has a Marsh Crawler Slogoth in it. That's what I mean. There is no other unit that is worse than the Marsh Crawler. And I'm going to show you why. And then same thing for Horfrost, that any other spell is better to cast than Horfrost. Any other spell is better to cast than Horfrost. Let's look at it why. First, thanks to my patron Panda, Wybarian makes good art. Check out a link to his Instagram below and buy some dice from Baron of Dice. Look how sick their dice are. And use code MDG to help uh, support the channel. So the reason that Marsh Crawler is bad is because of math. Cool. So here we have a table of Gut Rippers, and this is including um, just a regular, like, Gut Rippers unit without any buffs, without all out attack, without poisons, without elixirs, without any of those things. So against a 4-up save, 20, and this is of course a reinforced unit of Gut Rippers because this is where we're going to see the greatest effects of Hoarfrost, okay? Um, against a... So against a 4-up save, 20 Gut Rippers are going to... And this is every Gut Ripper attacking in combat too. is going to deal about 10.25 damage. So not great. Not a great amount of damage output. And this is, of course, on you know on average, right? So if we were to use Hoarfrost to give them 2-ups to hit instead of 4-ups to hit, then the damage goes up by about 3. Then against a 4-up save, we're looking at 13.67 damage, which... Funnily enough, is the same damage if we give them three rend with Horfrost. So if I cast Horfrost, um, and it doesn't matter if I get a, uh, if I get a two, if I roll like on on the D three, if I get a one or a two or a three, against a four up save, it's going to yield about the same damage output, about three three and a half damage, not a lot, not a lot. Um, the rend is, is going to be slightly better against higher armor saves, like better armor saves. So you can see with the two, against two up saves, the minus three rend is going to improve the damage by about four, um, against two up saves. And then the plus two to hit is better against worse armor saves. And so you can see against like a six up armor save that uh, we're increasing the damage by about 10. So here's where it's like starting to get like better. And then against null armor saves, right? Cause gut rippers have no rend. Um, it's uh, dealing like 20 damage. So this is like the best possible case for a reinforced unit of gut rippers. Okay. And then we look over at the Marsh Crawler Slogoth and the Marsh Crawler Slogoth has worse damage across the board because all we're doing is getting plus one to hit. You have to remember too, okay, so here's fundamentally why these numbers work out the way that they do. Okay, so without any buffs, the Gut Rippers are going to throw all of their dice and any benefits from Horfrost Rend are removed from a significant pr proportion of the dice that successfully hit because they're Venom Encrusted Weapons. So if we're looking at, if, if, if uh, Gut Rippers need a 4-up to hit, they're going to miss all their ones. They're going to miss all their twos. They're going to miss all their threes. They're going to hit on fours. They're going to hit on fives, but they're not getting any benefit from two wound rolls or two hit rolls from sixes. They're 
removed from that pool. So that means that any impacts of rend only apply to two out of six rolls. So one third of rolls are going to get the benefit of rend. It's the same thing with the two hit rolls. If they go on... Oh yeah, that's funny. So um, even with like really good horror frost, like two ups to hit, right? It's like it still has to go through a four up wound. And then even with the two ups to hit, still one sixth of all the dice are going to be removed from ones and one sixth of all the dice are going to be removed from sixes. So then all of a sudden we're reducing the number of dice that make it to the wound roll and make it to the rend um, of this attack profile. So we're just kind of taking dice away. And the Marsh Crawler, just for 170 points, is very expensive and is giving us only plus one to hit. And it's like, okay, so you hit on threes, but you still wound on fours and have no rent. Like, so many dice just are not getting the benefit of this. They're just really not. The only time, look, judging by these numbers, that Horfrost is really worth taking is if you're going to be running reinforced Scout Rippas and your opponent just has trash saves. If your opponent has absolute trash saves, maybe you could justify taking Horfrost. But the lore of the swamp is so good. So let's say that you're just packed with with casts. Let's say that you're running Cruel Boys and you have you have Gobsprack and you're running three Swamp Call of Shamans, which is what I normally run, and so you're gonna have access to five spells. Okay, one of them is Blizzard, and so let's start with the Swamp Callas, and then we'll work our way up to uh, Gobsprack. The way that I like to put spells on Swamp Call of Shamans in a Cruel Boys list is like what spells I, I think I'm actually gonna cast using them, and then uh, Gobsprack tends to be my last uh, caster, and he's gonna cast um, probably Sneaky Maya's mod himself, maybe into like Nasty Hex or something, right? Because by this point, there's not a ton of spells that are left to cast. But one Swamp Call of Shaman is definitely going to have Blizzard. Another Swamp Call of Shaman is definitely going to have Choking Mist, because that's a spell that I cast a lot. It's a spell that I'm going to cast every single turn in Cruel Boys is Choking Mist. Even in Big Wa, my Swamp Call of Shaman has Shaman of the Chilled Lands and Choking Mist. Because that is, I think, the best spell in our lore, and it's going to get cast every single time. Okay, so we have Blizzard, Choking Mist, and we have one Swamp Call left. So now we're gonna, now we're looking at what spells are worth taking here. Hoarfrost could you could make an argument for Hoarfrost, right? Like because it's a niche requirement. It's not like it's only it's only like somewhat good some of the time remember even against bad saves like if you're if you get that three rend which is funny to me because it's like you don't even really want it most of the time but even with the three rend best case scenario against like really high armor saves that you're only adding like two or three damage you're only adding two or three damage so arcane bolt right like are we talking about arcane bolt level good here and against really bad saves, um, you know, and so it's like you need, you know, I don't know. It just, it just feels so lit low impact. If you're gonna, if you're gonna use Horfrost though, you want to use it on the to hit profile of Gut Rippers. You want to get it to a two ups, to a two up to hit, because you don't four up is is not great. So there's like a high chance that you get a, a two up. Maybe even a three up is better. Because, correct me if I'm wrong, but if, if it become, it you change the profile. It becomes a 3-up, so then you can still all-out attack. Right. But even then, it's like against, like, 4-up saves, you're adding, like, 3 damage. It's like you're, you're, you're almost doing an Arcane Bolt. Like, at this point, is it not better to cast a Black Pit the vast majority of the time? Right? Like, let's just do, let's just look at it really quick and just see. Because from what I remember, to Black Pit, it's like you roll a number of dice equal to uh, the number of unit, the number of models in a unit, and whenever it's a six or it's greater than their save, that that deals a mortal wound. But we're just going to double check that that's actually what it is. To Black Pit is a spell has a casting value of seven and a range of twelve inches. Ca uh, pick one enemy unit within range, shall not holy with, just within range, and visible roll a die for each model of the unit for each six. And for each other roll that is equal to or greater than the unit save characteristic, that unit suffers one mortal wound. So what this becomes is it becomes 
even just like a horde buster. There's a lot of spells in this game where you roll a number of dice equal to the models and for every five and a six, it does a mortal wound. So if you're looking at a block of like 30 five up saves, you're going to deal 10 mortal wounds. It's a 12 inch range, right? So it's not a very far range. But even then, it's like, this is dealing more damage than your Horfrost is dealing most of the time. This is dealing more damage than most of the time. Again, the only exception is on if you have reinforced Gut Rippas. Like, if, if you don't have a block of 20 Gut Rippas in your list, this is all Null and Void. Right? Because this is the best possible case. If you only run 10 squads of Gut Rippas, then the damage increases here are going to be halved because Horfrost is only affecting half of the unit. Or, or like 10 models instead of 20 models. So if you're like, well, I have t like 3 times 10 Gut Rippas, it's like, well, this is a non-starter. Then the Horfrost is just bad. It's going to add, like even the best case scenario, it's only going to be adding like 5 damage in the best possible case scenario. And then the Black Pit is better here. So again, five casts. Swamp Call of Shaman 1 has Blizzard. Swamp Call of Shaman 2 has Choking Mist. To me, that is that is solid. And then number three, it's like to Black Pit or Sneaky Miasma. Both of those I think are better. Both of those I think are better. Uh, even a Mystic Shield, like giving plus one to save to a unit of Gut Rippers, I think is better than casting Horfrost the vast majority of the time. Nasty Hex is another good one. People want to come into your castle and you want to have the option of removing a ward uh, for things that, that are like close to you because Gobsprek might be doing might be somewhere else doing something else. So even Nasty Hex is better. That's a better tool, especially now that Nasty Hex also removes all those bodyguard rules, you know? And uh, Sneaky Miasma is another good one, you know? Like Gobsprek has it on, on himself. He can do it on himself way over in the corner, whatever. But maybe your Sludge Raker needs a Sneaky Miasma from time to time and being able to move in the hero phase. Like, Sneaky Miasma... Sneaky Miasma-ing a Sludge Raker Beast into Fasten, into Move and Charge and Sludge Raker calling the Wa. Like, that's really good. And that's going to be good a lot. Sneaky Miasma is going to be consistently useful. Nasty Hex is going to be nichely useful but when it's useful oh my is it going to be good and then of course gobsprack is going to cast whatever spells haven't been cast yet so he could do nasty hex to black pit he could do sneaky miasma into nasty hex he can do all kinds of things so yeah and or to black pit like the black pit is good if you're if there's a unit like let's say that they are a unit of brutes it's like well i'm gonna roll 10 dice and four ups are mortals right because it's is is equal to or greater than the unit save characteristic so five mortals against a 10 uh 10 model squad is nothing to sneeze at and if there's like i can't think of anything off the top of my head that likes to come in in big blocks that is also uh has a good save like for example i'm curious to see what uh what horrors i can't remember what pink horrors what they what their save is Let's just Google it up real quick. Let's see. Horrors of Zinch. Uh, six up save. All right, so whatever. But you, you kind of get my meaning. It's like, let's say that, like, Ard Boys. You know, if it's like a reinforced squad of Ard Boys and there's 20 Ard Boys and for every three up, they're taking a mortal. Like, oh my, that is phenomenal. So much better than Horfrost. So, I don't know. Am I wrong? Like, where is... And if I am wrong, if you do disagree with me, why do you think that Horfrost is better than the other spells that we have access to? In my opinion, it might even be better just to take Horfrost on two Swamp Kala Shamans and put them on the left and the right, and then Choking Mist in the middle. And then one of the Swamp Kala Shamans is going to cast... Because um, don't forget, one of, the, one of the Swamp Kala Shamans is going to ca cast Blizzard, and the other one is going to cast Summon Boggy Mist. Because don't forget... Summon Boggy Mist is another spell that wants to get cast every single turn. If no one's within range for Blizzard, you're like, cool. Mystic Shield, Summon Boggy Mist, Choking Mist, and then Gobsprack can either sneak you, then Gobsprack can do whatever two spells he's going to do. So, I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Join the Discord. Let's have a talk about it. I'm going to be running TTS leagues consistently from now on. I'm going to do four a year. 16 players four rounds so come get in on the fun we're having a good time like subscribe wah wow.